Welcome to another episode of Out of the Pods. I'm Deep T. And I'm Natalie. I'm so excited for this episode because we have our first guest. But before we get into that, let's just talk about life. Like what's going on with you, Deep T? Dude, life is pretty mundane for me. Not much going on. I have been staying in. We've been working on this podcast so much. I know. No drinking. And should we tell the people why we're not drinking that? Well, we are looking into egg freezing. Yes, we're going to freeze our eggs, baby. Yeah, so we're in the that babies. process right now. So we're just trying to be at our most healthiest. healthiest. And mm-hmm. that includes, you know, cutting out drinking, eating healthy, exercising a little bit more. Mm-hmm. Um, and then we're going to start treatment sometime soon. And obviously, we'll take you through that journey mm-hmm. with us. But that's kind of what started the whole 30 Health day kick. no no yes. drinking um I actually I've challenge been, we're doing. Yeah, I've been loving not drinking actually. I've like been meditating more. I just feel like I wake up so clear minded. I'm like, oh, I love this. I don't need a martini at dinner. <laughs> I know, same. Yeah. I, I feel so much better not drinking, not feeling hungover, you mm-hmm. know, the day after a rowdy night. Yeah. So I feel really good. Yeah. Also, guys, we anytime we go to dinner now and like our friends are drinking, we're like, let's get some. What did we get last night? Ginger, ginger ale, ale in yeah. a wine glass. We're like, can I just get it in a wine glass? I just want to feel cool. I know it's been <laughs> it's been really fun doing it with you, though, because mm-hmm. at least I have like an accountability par- partner yes. in this. So totally. it's been nice. Let's go into some Love is Blind news. Let's do it. What's even happening in the Love is Blind world? So Uh, it looks like season four is filming after the altar. Based on TikToks we've seen of filming crews with the cast and also things that they have posted on their Instagram stories where there's like cameramen or women in the shots with them. So um, I I knew it was coming. (laughs) I'm surprised that they're filming it so soon. Honestly, I'm glad that they're filming it so soon because if they wait too long, all of the stuff that they film becomes irrelevant. You know, by the time that it gets aired, people have moved on, people are doing different things, and it's just like, okay, that's old news. So I'm kind of glad that they're filming it so quickly. Also, do you remember ever being able to post about it? Because I don't recall posting. We did post about it, actually. There well, were, I shot. remember that there was news articles of like, oh, the cast of Love is Blind is celebrating Natalie's birthday somewhere in Michigan oh, well, you're right. when we were actually filming after the altar. But remember, I re- specifically recall when we were um, filming and I posted like a camera shot and they were like, you need to delete that immediately. Like we could say that we were there for Natalie's birthday, but like not that anything like filming oriented was happening. I don't know if that was just my experience. No, but you might be right. right. I think that they said to not show like any of the the camera camera staff. stuff yeah. right yeah because they wanted it to be kind of a surprise maybe well, surprise no more <laughs> <laughs> well maybe they're being like less strict with this cast yeah I, it feels like it i feel like they're just they're allowed to do whatever they want to do because there's just too many cast members now to keep track of <laughs> yeah Netflix confirmed that Vanessa and Nick will continue to be the host of Love is Blind and that rumors that Lauren and Cameron will replace them. Those are false. <laughs> I'm kind of, you know what? I, they can't replace mom and dad. They're the OGs. I really like Lauren and Cameron, mm-hmm. but you know, I do like that Vanessa and Nick are staying as hosts. I think that they will learn from kind of their mistakes being called out mm-hmm. and hopefully the season five reunion is better than ever. Exactly. Yeah. And I think, you know, as much as we do, like you said, we love Lauren and Cameron. And if anything did happen where Nick and Vanessa couldn't do it anymore, I think I'd like to see Lauren and Cameron. That could be fun. But too. Yeah. Even Tiffany and Brett. Yes. Oh my gosh. Also, we saw that Micah posted a very sentimental video of a bunch of clips of her and Paul's love story. And that was a little confusing to me, but also it reminded me of when I posted... um, um, me and Kyle's memory. So I, I think I, I understand why she did it, but I thought it was sweet. I felt like she posted it as like a farewell to that relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, and also because there were so many rumors, like the ones that we heard mm-hmm. that her and Paul weren't a genuine 
couple. And, you know, even Zach called her out at the reunion show, like, you never intended to marry Paul anyways. Mm -hmm. So I felt like she, it was kind of like an indirect response to that. Yeah. That's kind of similar to my situation because a lot of people were saying, oh my gosh, you and Kyle are clout chasing. And that's why I posted the, that video because I was like, there's so many beautiful memories here that you have not seen. And let me share them with you now because I wasn't able to before. So I think I understand why she did it. Yeah. I mean, does that change your opinion on their relationship? Because I know that we were really like pushing that they weren't mm -hmm. in a genuine relationship. Here's where I stand with that. I think even if you know that you're not going to marry somebody, it doesn't mean you don't have feelings for them. You know, like you can really care about somebody. And again, not saying that they trauma bonded, but they probably did. They went through this experience together and you know, I feel like they do have love for each other, but not enough to sustain a marriage. That was my thought too. Like my opinion is that they never intended to really get married. Maybe mm -hmm. it, maybe more so on her part, just again, based on things that we've heard mm -hmm. from our sources. But I think that along the way that they did develop feelings. I mean, they did date for a weekend after <laughs> their wedding day. I'm not saying that. that why like, did that sound funny? so funny to me? They did date for a weekend. <laughs> but like, clearly there was like some feelings there where they were like, let's try it out for a weekend. And yeah. then, you know, she broke up with him. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I thought it was a sweet post. Um, I thought Paul's comment was a little bit weird. He goes, together or yeah. not, I will always love you or something like that. Something. But then there's rumors that he has a girlfriend. What? Yeah, that's what people were commenting on the post. Do you think he's filming with a new girlfriend on ETA? You know what? There's some rumors about that, that um, he is going to include his girlfriend in some of the scenes. Ooh. But I'm not sure. I mean- I don't even know where that rumor came yeah, from. Yeah, interesting. But that's what I saw in the post of, of people being like, doesn't Paul have a girlfriend? Yeah, well, that's interesting. So we'll see some new faces maybe in ATA, like uh, along with Marshall's girlfriend too. Yeah, it looks like Marshall's girlfriend is also filming some scenes with Tiffany and Brett. There was a bunch of TikToks on that. So mm -hmm. I think that we will see some new faces, like you said. Okay, let's let's see what happens. Ayana McNeely. <laughs> Welcome to Out of the Fun. Stop it. You guys are nuts. I knew having you on this podcast would be would chaos. Be, would be chaos. <laughs> it would be chaos. We're way too comfortable with each other. Guys, we have Ayana McNeely, season two castmate, <laughs> and our best friend on the pod today. How are you? I'm, I'm good, actually. I'm so excited you're our first guest. Because I'm excited to be y'all's first guest. I mean, Natalie was my first guest on my po podcast, so it's like pretty cool that like- Comes full circle. I feel honored. I am so honored. Thank you. We we're honored you. to have you. Aww. Yeah, we're really lucky to have you. Um, I know so much has been going on in your world God. recently. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just came out that uh, Jarrett cheated on you during your marriage and- you know, we'll get to that, Yeah. but we're here to get to know you. Yeah. And we feel like this is really your place to tell your story. Yeah, because yeah. the crazy part is we already had this planned before even all this other stuff happened. Yeah. And I mm -hmm. kind of forgot that we planned this and then like, leading <laughs> up all this. I'm like, oh, wow, the timing of things. Planning on having you as our first guest. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, And not to mention also, like, you guys are very, very close. And we recently got close. So yeah. I'm excited for this for this because I feel like now I get to, it's a bond yeah, experience. like I get to know you more and like peel back all the onion layers. I always say people are like, they're trauma bonded. No, we, we, we actually are. Were. We absolutely <laughs> were trauma bonded, but we've taken that beyond like, yeah. beyond the trauma bond. It started as a trauma bond and now it's a real, a real, real friendship. Yeah, I thought absolutely. she was going to say a real, real bond. <laughs> <laughs> that too. It That's is true. a real bond. Um, let's go from Let's go to the very, very beginning. Oh, in the beginning. Let's start from the start. In the beginning. How <laughs> did you end up oh. on Love is Blind? That's a great question. Yeah, give us some details on your background, too. Um, so, you know, some people were reached out to. I applied. Mm -hmm. I did, too. Me, too. Like a dumbass. <laughs> um, I applied. When I applied, this was literally smack dab in the middle of quarantine. It had just happened. And I'm not going to lie, I was kind of tipsy. <laughs> <laughs> just like everybody else no i was sober uh, but me too um, i was stone okay. cold sober oh, like at least i have that excuse <laughs> you you women our conscious <laughs> our conscious thought was like let's apply yeah <laughs> but i i applied a little tipsy but i was like i, I think i'm ready for this i i believe I'm ready. and at that point i had been single for what two years and i was like i want to find a husband like i always considered that the ultimate relationship um and i was like i think i'm ready i want to be a wife so i applied 
like, let me not tap. <laughs> <laughs> I applied and uh, I was shocked when they called me back like a week later and I was yeah. confused. I was like, why me? <laughs> and still I question why me? But I think they saw all the trauma. They were like, oh yeah, that's gold. <laughs> that's gold. <laughs> you think? <laughs> Gotta put I her think, on. I think that's what it was. Cause I was very, I mean, I'm a very, you, know, you guys know, I'm a very open, vulnerable person. Mm -hmm. um, just very transparent. I wouldn't even say vulnerable, very transparent person. And so I was very honest in my, in my questionnaire. Um, and I think they probably saw that. They're like, oh yeah. That's so you talked about everything because you mentioned some things on the show mm -hmm. about just, you know, your childhood mm -hmm. and some moments in your life that really shaped who you were. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, can you talk about that? About what? About the just the trauma? <laughs> yeah, just what it meant to kind of like share that it was, during the application process yeah. and also talk about it on the show. I always want to be as transparent as possible with with anyone because I like to try to my best to live authentically as possible. Um, and I know that's usually the harder road because it opens me up to so much criticism, but it's okay. Um, I can handle that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and um, so I knew going into the pods, like I, I wouldn't feel comfortable moving forward with anyone if they didn't know everything about me. Um, and granted, I know that I realize in retrospect that opens you up to just like trauma dumping and like trauma bonding. Um, it's always in retrospect, but, <laughs> but I did learn my lesson. Nonetheless, like I, I wanted to make sure the person that I could potentially marry, you know, knows so much about me and where yeah. I came from and like how much I've worked through and, and how much I've healed through. Um, and yeah, so, I mean, really how resilient I am. <laughs> <laughs> um, but also just like the fact that I've been able to keep a soft heart, even through all that stuff, um, because I'm proud of that. Yeah. yeah. What, why do you think you ultimately decided, okay, this is the route that I'm going to take. I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I'm going to go on love is blind. Cause it's, it's just like, honestly, honestly, actually Lauren and Cameron. Really? I saw them and I was like, I want that. Like that's, I mean, it looks like it can work. And granted, we were only season two. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't, I didn't see the pattern of like, yeah. oh, maybe this can't work. Like, I don't know. Maybe it's an anomaly if it's like a good, healthy couple. Yeah. But um, I saw Lauren and Cameron. I was like, I want that. And I feel mm -hmm. like I can have that. Um, I feel ready. I feel like I know myself. I have good self-awareness and emotional intelligence. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I can, I can pinpoint that. I was wrong. But, <laughs> but you know, no. like, I felt like I, I could do that, that I was ready. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. love that. Why did you do the show, Deep D? Why did I do? I wanted a unique love story. Because it, it's, it's it's so, so special. Unique. Yes. And, and that's why I said on the show, I was like, imagine like the, the story we would tell our kids. Yeah. Like, look how we met. Exactly. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. People ask me, like, you knew that there was going to be a fame piece or a social media piece. I'm like, that part scared me. I did. I actually turned down the opportunity in the application process like three times because of that oh, very really? aspect. Yes. And they were they kept reassuring me, like, it's not that kind of show, Ayana. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, okay. Like, and I was warming up to the idea. Idea. Um, yeah, <laughs> Look, yeah, <laughs> but yeah, I, 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 um, I mean, I definitely wanted a unique love story. Too. Yes. Oh my God. I love that. Yeah. Why did you do it, Natalie? <laughs> <laughs> Here's the thing about me. I am very pessimistic. Like if you really get <laughs> like, to know, know. me like as we a know. person, it's, if you really know me, I have like a stone cold heart. No, you that don't. That is not That's true. Not okay, outwardly I do though. I, okay, I just want to say something about Natalie sees herself in the weirdest way. <laughs> self-deprecating. It's so self-deprecating. Mm -hmm. I do. If you yeah. give Natalie a compliment, immediately she, she like say cringes. 10, 10 bad things about herself. <laughs> yes. And I'm like, no. And so I started this thing with her. I'm like, if I compliment you, you can't say anything but thank yes. you. And she she cringed. She cringed so hard. I'm like, of Natalie, she, she has a heart of, I would not be friends with you if you did not have a heart of gold. Oh, I agree. Well, thank you. you. That, mm -hmm. you okay, well, picky maybe I, I won't say I have a cold heart. I'll say I'm very pessimistic. You are very So <laughs> when I applied to the show, I really did it because I was like, well, it could potentially work, but it probably wouldn't, but yeah. it would be a really cool experience because I'm so bored during this <laughs> pandemic and being in quarantine, it'd be a really cool experiment or experience to like be on a TV set or mm -hmm. a reality TV set. Mm -hmm. I didn't do it for like to become an influencer because let's be real. Mm -hmm. What I, are we And influencing? I just want to say this. <laughs> we, we didn't go in being like, we can be an influencer. Like, yeah. I, first of all, I dressed very normal. Did you like, have like 500 followers before or something? <laughs> yeah, I only had like 400 and like 20 followers. Stop. But I was like, I barely post on social media. Same. I, I dress very like normally. I don't have a particularly unique personality I or look. Dude. And I'm like, how am I going to be an influencer? Like no one thinks like that if you're just a normal, normal person, work it, like exactly. working person. Yeah. Um, but I really went in more so for the experience and being like, oh, cool. Like, like I was a part not? of this, but mm -hmm. did I think I was going to get engaged? No. 
I didn't either, though. Yeah. Really? I didn't, I didn't pack I enough clothes anyone. for some oh, reason. yeah, because you had to borrow some Yeah, yeah. I didn't pack enough clothes because I was like, I'm not going to. I remember that, away. actually. Yeah, I'm not going to stay there for. Wait, that, that was the opposite for me. I smacked with an intense experience. No one, yeah. I, I will say none of us expected it expected uh, wait, to be expected this it to be that intense mm -hmm. yeah it was so intense i actually i had a weird feeling that i was gonna like find somebody really but i think oh, i, I found myself baby <laughs> because honestly it wasn't <laughs> it wasn't what i expected i mean you found him but, yeah you know. i yeah. found someone no i was <laughs> i was yeah. not expecting to get engaged mm -hmm. at all. I nice. really just went in because I thought it would be a really cool experience. Mm -hmm. And a bit, pe a part of me was like, well, if it works, like so cool, but yeah. it probably won't. And I'm just going to go in because like, maybe I'll be in the background and I could tell my friends like, oh, there, you know, there's oh me. Gosh, that's so funny. And then it just blew up yeah. in my face. <laughs> <laughs> With I remember it blew up in all of our faces. Yeah, <laughs> <Seriously. honestly. laughs> um, what was it like walking in the pods for you and just like the first days of dating? It was interesting. I will mm -hmm. say definitely intense. We were in a bubble. Yes. We were all yes. in a bubble. Um, and I, I think that that uh, led to the intensity. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember going in there and thinking, I don't trust any of these bitches. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know any of these women. I'm not here to uh, make friends. And I, you, you guys remember, I'd just yeah. be in there like reading, reading my a book, book, not paying attention to anyone and just kind of observing. Um, but my, my sole goal was to just go in the pods and be just myself. Mm -hmm. And and that's what I did. Um, and I will say I'm a pretty good conversationalist. At least yeah. I like to think so. Mm -hmm. um, and I knew I would attract, you know, well, <laughs> I knew I would attract people who would be attracted to me. But that's a joke now. But <laughs> anyways. Wait, why is that a joke? I feel like you did attract I mean, a few I guys. did. I think I just tr chose poorly. Mm. Because you had know. our selections weren't that great. No, our selections weren't great, but also I think you had to go through what you went through. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. That was I the right so person for you. Lessons, mm -hmm. So many lessons. So many lessons. And I love that for me. Yeah. So on the show, viewers only see you connect with Jared. Like they don't yeah. see your other connections. Other connections. Yeah. But who were your other connections? Oh my God. I actually, people love, oh, you know, Jared, she's <laughs> second choice. Um, I actually also had a second choice. Um, I just figured mine out, what, a day before Jared did? Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say his name. What if he's like, I don't want that attention. Whatever. I don't Anyways, know yours. Hasibi. 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 <laughs> Hasibi. Uh, he was actually my other connection. And, and it was so, I think all of us had the same dilemma of um, having two choices that were so different. Mm -hmm. It's like this, this one will provide a completely different life. And this one feels familiar. And I yes. feel like everyone had the same, same kind of experience. choices, right? Because we all had like two options. And then mm -hmm. we were trying to figure it out. Well, except for I was Natalie. just going to say, except, except for, for Natalie. Natalie, <laughs> Natalie like, it was day three. She's like, well, this is my I husband. I know. I had to cut Shane because of that reason. <laughs> I remember. Oh, everyone did. Yes. Everyone, well, first of all, he was never on my list. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you cut him day one, I feel day like. Day one, I was like, ew, his voice. <laughs> no, I can't do it. I'm sorry, Shane. I love you. Um, but I was like, I can't, I can't do the voice, man. <laughs> um, yeah, I... Okay, so my other one was Rocky. Mm. But... I kind of wish you were. Me too. I like Rocky. I, I, I did. I do like Rocky a lot. Like, not not currently. Uh, not currently. Like, like I like. He him has as a whole a lot. whole fiance. Yeah. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> no, he has a girlfriend. And yeah. she's like beautiful. a live-in girlfriend. Yes. Um, I I like Rocky as a person. Like I really really like yeah. him, and I do think that we would have gotten. I think you guys would have been a lot more. Yeah, compatible. I mm -hmm. I do think that we would have gotten along better than Shane and I did. Yeah. I do not know why. <laughs> I was so hardcore on Shane. I was so sure, like you were, when I, I met him that. day three, I was like, "This man's gonna be my husband." I got him. And I was so confused because at <laughs> that point, did. I had only talked to him on day one, but I was like, "Huh?" Yeah, she came in. Everyone was. That's everyone my was boyfriend. Like, everyone was like, "Huh?" Everyone's like, "This is the That's most like, unlikely." But I mean, you guys are so high energy. Well. Mm -hmm. I want to know I Natalie now, in the pods, to be honest. I think now that you know me, I'm not as high energy not as, as you much thought. As he is. Yeah. But you still are very high energy. You're really? a nut. You're a nut. <laughs> <laughs> you're a Natalie. You, we'll be in the club and she'll put her. You live to twerking. Put her, put her legs up on, on the, the wall. wall to start, drop it to, to the twerk. floor. Wait, try to twerk. Not say twerking, Ooh. but try to twerk. I don't know what you guys are talking about. <laughs> I've never tried to Corporate. twerk in my life. Oh, and the splits. Don't even get me started Oh with the my God. The splits and the heels too. Watch what I can do. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry. I thought this interview was about okay, Ayana. Yeah. Let's come back me. to Ayana. <laughs> um, but you know what's crazy? 
And I think we've talked about this before, but not openly about how you and I didn't get along. It's in not the that lounge. we didn't get along. No, I you honestly, hated her. Don't lie. <laughs> it's not that I even. I was just like, yeah, don't like that one. <laughs> it's because you were hanging out with some uh, a questionable person, and I was like, Ooh. I know. Don't do that. Oh. Don't do that. But I, I knew I could tell pretty quickly, like she did not have good character. And immediately I was like, mm -mm, if you're going to be friends with her, that means that's what you're attracted to. And I don't need that. Mm. And it would wow. just, yeah. But, but be, because I saw I had more um, exposure to you guys. So I felt mm -hmm. like I could make a better judgment. Um, granted, though, I realized in retrospect, just like we didn't know the guys that well, we didn't know each other that no. well. Yeah. And so we were making very quick uh, observations about each other based mm -hmm. off of like these small interactions we were having in the lounge. Yeah. Because we all stayed in our own separate hotel rooms because this is when COVID was happening. Right? Yeah, you're right. Yeah. But you know, I did love that you and I connected though a little oh, bit we because did. you were in the, you would like sit and read and yes. I was like, I really want to get to know her yeah. and like kind of penetrate and like kind of get, get deep did. yeah I, remember I relied on you quite a bit you and juhi mm -hmm. yes yeah. yes yeah. i love those moments actually i mean those those got me through you know? yeah I'm well i wasn't a part it. of those moments because <laughs> ayana hated you were me. in the corner eating ding dongs <laughs> with your other friends literally i was like this girl is crazy <laughs> she's insane remember with the cut <laughs> i i gained 11 pounds in the past oh yeah you did didn't you yeah, yeah. i think i was opposite I, I lost like 12. there was i think there was, was a scale in mexico so much because i was so anxious yes. I Really? Yeah, Me I was too. Anxious. Every single morning, I was so anxious just based off of like the the decision I had to make, mm -hmm. and I was like, "This is heavy. Like, what am I doing? I don't trust myself." And then on top of the fact, you can't call like family and friends mm -hmm. to like get their insight. And I think if I had my my friends would have been like, "I know what." Yeah. <laughs> What I are you doing? Say no. What are you doing? <laughs> um, but like, because I didn't have that, I knew it was just me. And mm -hmm. I, I, at that point, I didn't completely trust myself. And I was so anxious about it. Yeah. So speaking about making decisions, mm -hmm. why did you choose Jarrett over Hasib? I chose Jarrett because I just, I really genuinely thought that that was the better choice for me. Me and Hasib had the huge barrier of uh, different religions. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, I was like, I don't know if this is gonna, I don't think this is compatible. I know some people can do it, but like when we start having kids, I feel like it's gonna be so complicated. And I was thinking so far ahead that I wanted to make sure I chose correctly. <laughs> but I, I just thought that Jarrett was a lot more compatible with me. Now in retrospect, I also realized that like being in that experiment, um, it does kind of higher the chances of like trauma bonding and, and love bombing and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, because I thought like Jarrett genuinely was introspective and I was like, okay, this is a good fit. Not realizing that it was just the experiment that allowed him the opportunity to, to be that, but he wasn't naturally that way. Yeah, and also there's so many emotions flying around oh my God, that you, yes. you kind of like confuse it with love. Sure, and it's sure. like, no, I'm just- Yes, and you're like, I am connected to this person. Yeah. I know this is going to be my I know them. Dude. I know them. You feel like you genuinely know their soul. Mm -hmm. Yes. And it's so what easy. What I also realize is like, if that person doesn't know themselves well enough, they'll just present who they believe that they are. Yes. And it's not until like the proper amount of time has gone by of mm -hmm. actually dating this person, because I don't think that really happens. You don't really genuinely start to get a feel for someone until like three to four months in. I completely And we had agree. what, two months? Yes. I also, <laughs> I also think people have to go through seasons with people to see who I they agree. really are because they portray who they want to be, I agree. not who they actually are. I agree. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that's where I realize in retrospect back to like Ayana never go that fast again what are you doing I mean yeah. of course I'll never like get engaged <laughs> that fast but even just like committing to anyone like I'll never commit to anyone until like at least I get a feel for who they actually are and there's been a true foundation of building actual trust mm -hmm. yeah. so like tell us like after you got engaged what was your experience like leading up to the altar moment oh my god um we had issues um like with him going out and stuff but we kept having the conversations and we were never like truly arguing but it was a simple conversation like hey this makes me really uncomfortable and he always handled them very well and he was always so reassuring and so I was like okay well I feel like this isn't going to be a real issue um and on top of that we were like we refused to we just took on this idea of like it's us against the world mm -hmm. um, because we went into it thinking like, oh, reality TV, like it's going to be messy. And we were just like, we have to protect ourselves. Um, and I think it wasn't until after the cameras left and we we stood and just looked at each other and like, oh, my God, what do we do now? <laughs> like, what do we do now? Um, but yeah, I, I, leading up to it. Yeah, there were some issues. Um, but I, I mean, I will say I ignored quite a few what felt like yellow flags for me. 
um, at the time because I didn't see a lot of the things that the audience saw. I didn't see like mm-hmm. how he was talking to his friends or how his friends were talking about him. I didn't see how he was talking to his sister or how his sister was talking about him. Like I didn't see those things. I didn't even see the conversation with Mal or how upset he was with with, with the conversation with Mal. Like yeah. I didn't see any of I, I didn't see any of that. Um, and so I was only going based off of you know what he was telling me and 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 how he was reassuring me, and that felt safe enough. Um, so I felt comfortable. Um, that's the thing. I didn't feel comfortable enough to say yes. On the wedding day, I almost said no. Really? I remember that. Yeah. So Ayana and I, we got the closest mm. when we returned back to Chicago yeah. um, after Mexico. That's and when I, I had a moment of vulnerability because I saw you were struggling too and I could tell you were struggling yeah. behind the scenes. And I was like, I feel like I want to reach out to her. But at that time, we were so paranoid. We were like, we don't know who can, who we can trust. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, and so I, I decided to reach out to you and I was like, do you want to just meet and just like talk? Oh, I, I remember that. that. And then we talked about like, we had this very vulnerable conversation of like, how, how ready sure are, are we yeah. Yeah, to say yes on our wedding day? Yeah. Because I think you and I were going through the same thing of wanting to protect our relationships. We mm-hmm. had, Shane and I had that same mentality of, or at least I did of, it's me against mm-hmm. production or reality tv i gotta protect my relationship as much as i can but you get confused of like Mm -hmm. is that protection because i really really want to say yes to this person at the time i did but then i also was like but is it the right choice to say yes yeah it's a very confusing feeling when you're in it super confusing Mm -hmm. thing it was so confusing yeah even for me, like knowing Shake and I were probably going to say no, it was still confusing for me. Yeah. But that moment when I talked to you at the bachelorette party was this solidifying oh moment God, for I me. That moment. I was just like, I was oh, just wait. Like, deeps, no. Yes. And no, I was like, deeps. you're right. What am I doing? Like, this Why am I? He doesn't speak highly of you. Yeah. No. You and, don't deserve that. Mm-hmm. That was a very eye opening moment for me. <laughs> we were over there crying. I know. We were tipsy as hell. Yes. We were just crying on, was that, like, on a <laughs> rinky dinky boat. Yes. And then you guys were crying in my bathroom later that night. Oh, we were? Yeah, yeah, I remember that. Because we all met that. up afterwards, yeah, remember? remember? all of us? In her that. in her apartment. And, then, and I'm like dealing with my own problems that night. And You're then like, you guys are you crying not? in my bathroom. And I walk in my bathroom and I was like, what are you guys doing here? <laughs> We're like, leave us alone. <laughs> We're having a moment. And then I'm sitting there listening, but I have no idea what's going on. I was like, and Can you it was crazy. Not? Yeah, <laughs> no, literally. It was, that night was, that I mean, for me, it was crazy, but like it just in general, there was so much that happened that night, mm-hmm. like there in terms was of a like lot that happened that night. Cause didn't, yeah. well, I was like other relationships were kind of like crumbling mm-hmm. around us. Literally. There was just like other fights. There was so happening. much pressure. It was mm-hmm. just like, whoa, we're all in a pressure cooker. <laughs> Everyone's <laughs> been drinking when and I'm like, <laughs> it was so it that was, was crazy. Bad. If, do you think that if you watched the show mm-hmm. like if you knew everything that was happening behind oh, the I scenes said no i would have straight up said no really i absolutely would have said no because because i was so love is blinding it's not mm-hmm. even blind love is blinding <laughs> <laughs> um, but i just i didn't see a lot and again i was just going based off of his words but again mm-hmm. i almost said no on the wedding day and i texted him i texted my producer i said i'm saying no i can't do this because he was out till four o'clock in the morning that day <gasps> you're right oh, wow and the thing is is like i don't know much about at the time i didn't know much about the club scene mm-hmm. and i because i don't like clubs they're so overstimulating and yeah. i don't understand and you were new to chicago and too I was, right i Literally, I had just moved to Chicago, Mm -hmm. literally just moved to Chicago. Um, So I didn't know about the club scene. I didn't know what a a club promoter job entails. Mm -hmm. And so um, I was texting. I I, I was texting. I was like, I I have to say no. Like, I can't deal with this. I'm like, you're saying this isn't you, but I'm seeing otherwise. And then uh, after that, he just showed up randomly at my hotel that morning um, at like 5 a.m. in the morning. And he was convincing me like, please, please say, I promise you this isn't me. Like, this isn't typical behavior. It's because of COVID. I've missed my friends. Like, I haven't been going out. And I understood that because also because of COVID, I was so heavily introverted. And I'm not that introverted. You guys see yeah. me. Yeah. I'm not that introverted. But because it was straight after COVID or during mm-hmm. COVID, I was like, oh, I just don't like everything is so overstimulating. I just want to be in the house. Um, and so I understood to a degree and I believed him. And then I said, yes. But when did you start regretting saying yes? It was probably about two to three months in when I had the proper that amount soon. of time to actually get to know him. And that's when I realized, like, I made a mistake because I remember he was he was already doing the going out thing and it kept going. And then I would text him. and He'd just ignore me. But then he, he he'd respond like every two hours with like a picture. No, look, it's fun. I'm just out with the guys. Um, and I'm just like, this is not appropriate behavior. And he'd come home when the sun was up. And I'm mm-hmm. like, dude, what's. 
what is what is this? And that's when I realized, like, oh, man, I made a mistake. But at that point, I'm already married. And I took vows. Mm -hmm. And I took that very seriously. And I was like, I have a role to play. This is my husband. I have to at least try to, you know, make it work and put my all into it. Yeah, I think that's what I was going to ask you is if you knew two, three months in that you were regretting it already, what made you wait so long? Yeah you know, before you, I just wanted to make sure I gave him the appropriate amount of time because that was his biggest complaint. You're not giving me enough time. You're not giving mm -hmm. me enough time. And so I said, okay, well, let's set ourselves up for success. And so only about five to six months in, I was like, we have to do therapy. Like we, and he was resistant to that. And I was like, no, I don't want to give you an ultimatum, but I need someone who will grow with me and I need you to want to want this. And he's like, okay, mm -hmm. fine, let's do it. And then that's when we started therapy. It was like December of that month. And we had only been married for like five months at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but then we started therapy and therapy was so helpful for me personally, because she was questioning things about my mindset and about my perspective and how I was reacting in it because I did have a lot of insecurity. Granted, it was through his behavior, but I didn't like that I couldn't maintain integrity and in, and in, and in not reacting in a way because I felt like the only way that I could get the truth sometime was like going through his phone. And I don't, that's not me. That's really not me. I'm not that person. I don't like, that's an invasion of privacy, but mm -hmm. he would just, he would just either tell half truth or lie or just like not say things at all. Mm -hmm. um, and it just, and, and therapy is so helpful for me. And she was like, Ayana, where's this coming from? Or, and she did, cause I therapize myself. You, you hear me, I, I ramble all the time <laughs> and I'm constantly like therapizing. Um, but all she had to do was ask a question and immediately I'd, I'd question myself. And, and it was so challenging, but it was so good. I loved it. I think your intuition was really kicking in. Oh, like, check that phone. Something is happening. Bro. Do you, do you remember this? It was months before I even received, you know, the email. <laughs> and I kept saying, because I, I got to know him and I got to know his character. And I kept saying, I feel like I'm going to get a message. I feel like I'm going to get a DM. I'm going to get something. I'm yeah. gonna get you something. manifested that shit. And it happened. Well, I didn't want her to manifest it. No. I think we so I lived it through you, I feel like. Yeah. Because you shared like every time something would happen, you would call me and be like, He's not home and it's seven AM. Or I'd be downward I spiraling. found this on his phone, or I found a girl's number in his car. Yeah. And I remember just being like why are you holding on? Like even then I was like, Yeah, you are just holding on to like a thread. Yeah. You tried so hard in that marriage. I really did. When did you find out he cheated on you? Yeah. I found out three days before after the altar started filming, which was a lot for me. And you, mm -hmm. and you know, I call and that that's another, I'm not going to lie. Although like you are a big support for me and I'm happy I talked to you and I'm happy I talked to my mom. That was another regret that I had that I included too many people in our marriage. Um, I should have just stuck to talking to my mom, someone who was like a, she was an expert. I don't want to say an expert in marriage, but she's been married for like longer than a decade and a half. Um, but nonetheless, like you remember, as soon as I got that email, I was literally sitting in between his legs while he was taking out my knotless braids. Mm -hmm. And I get this email with details and I'm, I, I immediately go into fury mode yeah. and I call now like I'm divorcing him. I can't do it. I even call production and say, you're going to have to film us separately. I can't do it. Mm -hmm. And then I called my mom and my mom said, I am not saying leave him. I'm not saying don't leave him. What I am saying is you're making a rash decision out of a high emotion. I want you to make this decision with a clear head. And she was right. Mm -hmm. But the thing is, is I didn't have enough time to process. It was yeah. literally three days before after the altar before we were about to be on camera again. And I was mm -hmm. going to be put in a position to protect us again. But I realized I was carrying the weight by myself. I, in, in retrospect, I realized I was carrying it by myself. Oh. Um, but nonetheless, like I told Jared, I don't want to be inauthentic. So mm -hmm. I don't want to pretend like we're perfect. We're not perfect. So let's just talk about something that's we've already talked about. That actually is still an issue. Let's just focus on you. And he agreed. He said, OK. What did that email say that you received? The first email was just saying that he invited two women to her and her friend to our home. And she said, if you want further details, I can give them. And when I mentioned it to Jared, Jared was like, she's lying. She's lying. I know she's lying. I never did that. I never brought any, anyone to our home. And so I asked for further details. And she knew my address, she knew my apartment number, she knew it was beside my bed, she knew it was in my living room. She knew a lot. She knew details about him that I didn't even know. Mm -hmm. And I was like, Whoa. 
what is this? Like, are you serious? And it, it was exactly what I was looking for, um, for that, for that final thing to make me feel like I can leave. But then I stayed. Did you believe the email immediately when you read it? Immediately? Yes. Because I, at that point, I just, it was a gut intuition. I knew his character and I yeah. knew he was capable of that. Um, and for a second, I, I, I questioned like, well, maybe let me let me really look at the facts here. But the show was at its peak at that point. This woman mm-hmm. could have made a TikTok. This woman could have even tweeted mm-hmm. something. Yeah. She could have done anything. And she didn't. She literally was just like, I feel like you should know this. I really feel like you should. Know. It's not fair to you that you don't know. And I'm so happy that she did. Mm-hmm. I even I even messaged her. And it's been a year since that point. I messaged her even like a few months ago saying thank you. Thank you for letting me know that because this was the beginning of me beginning to detach and mourn and just leave because I needed to go. Yeah, yeah. that's what I was going to ask you is like, why did you believe her over Jared? And it's because I saw him. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was already doing things like he he, lo- he loved to live in the gray and then gaslight me because he was only in the gray. Mm-hmm. This wasn't gray, though. He was kissing this woman and groping her in my bed. Mm-hmm. with the intention of cheating great oh it was cheating <laughs> and he loves to say that's not cheating but with the intention of having sex with her and it wasn't until her friend her friend noticed my things in the bathroom and her friend said wait a second you have a girlfriend and he said i have a wife and they said oh, we got to get out of here and they left yeah and jared did a instagram live talking about this a few days ago mm-hmm. and he's denying that you know, he ever kissed her or groped another woman. The thing that doesn't make sense to me is like, okay, let's say, let's say that it didn't happen. You mm-hmm. were invited two random women to our home with the, in, with, with the excuse of I was just being nice mm-hmm. and they were drunk and I wanted to, I wanted to be, what? Like, does Uber not exist? Yeah. I'm confused. Are we not grown Are adults? Not, you knew you were a married man. That's not appropriate for mm-hmm. a married man. That's exactly what I thought watching his live when he said, oh, I was in the other room and I heard the woman say, oh, this guy's got a <gasps> whole girlfriend. Why did he invite us here? And that just proves that he wasn't giving off the energy of a single man. And he that's why she was surprised. He was married. Like, was he not wearing his wedding ring? Like, mm-hmm. what is it? Right. But. I was really disheartened by that live. I was um, pretty disappointed because me talking about this wasn't it wasn't with the intention of just outing him. I have a Mm -hmm. podcast that's about relationships and healing and trauma. And for months, I haven't been able to really talk about my journey. Um, And I feel I just felt so inauthentic. Like I felt I felt like a hypocrite. I'm like, I can't even talk about this. Jared also said on his Instagram live that there was a situation where he caught you with another man or holding hands with another man one night yeah i just want i just want to also point out in that live he made sure to say yeah go ask her go ask her because he knew that i would be honest about it and he knew that i would be transparent about it because Mm -hmm. i if anything i will continue profusely apologize for this situation um and i don't mind taking accountability uh but i would never say go ask jared because i know what his response would be but nonetheless, um, the situation, I, this was what, a month into our marriage and I went out, you know, I'm smaller than you guys, so I can't, I can't drink as much. So everyone's like, oh, let me get a drink. And I'm like, yeah, give me one too. Um, and so at some point we were at that rooftop and then I blacked out mm-hmm. and an hour later, cause I, I made sure to check my text messages because I thought, am I, am I tripping? Like maybe I did, maybe it was hours, maybe, you know, but I checked my text messages and it was an hour later where Jared was trying to pick me up. Um, but I ended up at Celeste. I ended up at Celeste and I came to there and I remember I was, uh, I was at the, I was around the bar or something and some guy just kept trying to talk to me. I was like, no, like I'm married. I was like, I actually just got married. And I was like showing him my wedding ring. But I remember he kept following me around and, and I'm at this point, I'm so drunk. And I remember Jared texting me like, Hey, I just got off of work. Like, can I come pick you? I'm like, yeah, come pick me up. Please let me know when you're here. But my texts were so illegible. It was just like, what is (laughs) happening? And I remember trying to send him my location, but instead I sent him his contact information. It was just too much. Um, but thankfully he did have my location and he came to find me. He was like, Romy and Celeste. And by the time he came forward, um, 
I remember I was trying to walk toward the stairs because he said he was there and I was trying to leave but, but the guy was behind me Jared said we were holding hands I don't I don't know if that's true or not I don't remember holding hands with him um but I do remember him being behind me and when Jared approached he's like all right Diana it's time to go and the guy the guy goes like Oh, she's good, bro. Oh, yeah. And I'm surprised Jared didn't punch him in the face then. Um, Cause quite honestly, like how disrespectful. Yeah. Um, but we leave right after that. And I remember saying like, oh, wasn't it nice that that guy was checking on me? That's so sweet. And Jared got upset. Of course he got upset. But at this point I'm belligerently drunk. I woke yeah. up the next morning, the shower curtain was broken because apparently I had fallen in the shower. Like it was just too much. It was a lot. When he mentioned that on his Instagram live, it almost felt like he was saying, well, she did this to me, so I'm justified that this happened. The, the, the part that confuses me is that, and I don't want to speak ill of him, but at the same time, it's like, why did you even mention that? Because it's mm -hmm. not comparable. Um, I'm not saying I'm not excusing it. I'm not saying it was acceptable behavior. What I am saying, it's not comparable. But the next day, I checked my text messages. The next day, he he does ex he does express like, please just never let that happen again. Like that put me in a really bad headspace. And I said. I understand, like I was very concerned by my own behavior. That'll never be repeated behavior. Um, I love you. And he sent me a kissy face and I sent him some dramatic ass gift because a uh, gif because that's what I do. Um, <laughs> and uh, then that was it. He never mentioned it again until a year later when I asked for a divorce. And I remember uh, telling my therapist like, oh, I just wanna have a few close out sessions to make sure you know we're coping well and to make sure we're on the same page about moving forward because our marriage is very public and I wanted to make sure we were both protected. And it was then during those closeout sessions that he brought it back up and he kept bringing it up uh day after day and i kept apologizing apologizing at some point i realized jared I, it kind of feels like you want to stay angry to make yourself feel better mm -hmm. about the dissolution of our marriage and your behavior causing the dissolution of our marriage because at the end of the day it's not it's not the incompatibility why we divorce it's my lack of trust for him because he continued to do things that were just like just not appropriate yeah I, for me, watching that live, it made it seem like, okay, let me just kind of displace the, like, project the, yeah, and then just, like, let's have this entire thing, like, all the attention go to Ayana in this situation and, like, get it off of this email and this cheating that's the part been that exposed. also kills me is that I never spoke ill of this man. I simply mm -hmm. said, I'm tired of protecting you. And I, we've had this conversation before where I told him, I feel like at some point I'm going to get there where I don't want to lie anymore. And I can't protect you anymore. And especially with you feeding off of the lie. And you, you see the criticism that I get that I was hypercritical during after the altar and that I, I wasn't patient enough for you. And you fed into it. And you, you, you also said the same thing when in reality you knew behind the scenes. I was really trying my best to forgive you and move forward and everything but it was his continued behavior that led to just like me saying like I can't I can't do it man I, I can't I can't give you this much grace it's just not okay for me it's at my expense why did you essentially protect Jared during after the altar well during the after the altar I realized I didn't have enough time to process the fact that he had cheated and I had to make a very quick decision about like what am I gonna do and I didn't know what I was gonna do and so I moved forward with I thought was the wisest decision of I have to protect my marriage until I figure it out um and so I did um mm -hmm. yeah and so I did and even with the divorce um it took me a really long time to detach as his wife and the role that I felt like I had to play as his wife and and because I grew to know him and I knew why he was the way that he was. And and that's, God, that's the, the downside of being an empath. You know mm -hmm. what that's like. Oh, dude, yeah. <laughs> of being an empath because you want to be helpful so bad. And it's hard for us to have boundaries sometimes with that because you don't know what's too far until after the fact. It's crazy because I like think about ATA mm -hmm. and I was so angry at him for you. And I saw how much you were pretending like you guys were honest, like there's problems, but you were hiding so much of what was really going on. And I remember wanting to like punch him in the face <laughs> every time. Even still, Natalie's yeah. like, oh. yeah. every time I saw him yeah. and, and I couldn't because I had to kind of go along with yeah. you wanting to protect your marriage because who am I just your best friend. But I was all like, it's ultimately you know, your life and your choice. But I just, I remember feeling so angry 
at him and I don't know how you kept it together because I was and I, I wanted know, to crack honestly. so easily during AT and just reveal it all for you. I, and 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 because production knew at that point and yeah. you know they were like like you should talk about it. Yeah, of course. And I just I just I couldn't do it. You know, it's it's interesting because I also I was in a six year relationship before Love is Blind mm-hmm. and oh, wow. he cheated on me. Yeah. But I didn't tell any of my friends yeah. and I went through it alone. And it's kind of similar because you don't want just because you have hope that the relationship is going to work out and your marriage is going to work, that you keep it to yourself because you don't want other people to see him in a different light. And I didn't. I didn't. Mm-hmm. I didn't. Wa- I wanted to give him the best chance possible to grow. Mm-hmm. And I knew that that wouldn't have happened if if people were coming at him. I mean, even now, that's why I protected him even after the fact, because I was just like. I just want him to grow. I want him to grow and I want to give him the opportunity. And I remember I, I kept pleading with him after the divorce. Jared, please talk about it on your podcast. Just be honest. You have a whole podcast. Be be authentic about it. Be transparent about it. And he was just like, no. <laughs> and I was like, well, okay, well, I feel like I'm getting to the point where I want to talk about it. I was like, don't you want to come on my podcast and have an honest conversation? He's like, no. Oh, so you actually talked to him about it. Like, oh, let's yes, talk. plenty. Plenty. Wow. Plenty. I was like, bro, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. Like, don't, don't, don't put me in a position where I have to like protect myself or even just like where, yeah, don't put me in this position, man. Like, just be honest. Just be honest. Well, he's still not being honest because on his Instagram live, he said that he didn't cheat on you. He said that he didn't kiss the girls and that he just brought them over to have a few drinks and he, you know, went to go lay down in his bedroom. Which is wild. Yeah. But I have a picture of this woman in his clothes in my living room. Do you think that that's the only incident? I don't know. And I don't want to say that there is more, but I will say that there were quite a few just gray area things Mm -hmm. that kept coming up. And I was like, this is inappropriate for a married man. It's just not. And he would gaslight the hell out of me. Um, And I'd believe him. I mean, that's that's what manipulation is. (laughs) That's that's what it is, Um, because I, I. I, again, I was his wife and I was like, this man is my husband. Like, why else would he marry me? Why would he say yes if he didn't want this to work, if he didn't want to try to make it work? You know, it didn't make sense to me. It's like, wow, why do you want to continue to stay? Because I I looked again, I looked through my text messages and I saw in May I was advocating for a divorce. I was like, Jared, just be honest with me. You don't want to be with me. You don't. You don't want to be with me. He's like, no, you don't understand. I love you. I really love you. He's like, I'm trying to change. I'm trying to be a better man for you. And I'm like, what, Jared? And that's another thing. He admitted to me that, yes, he did cheat. Mm. But then, like, publicly, like, it just feels like a slap in the face. What caused you to finally ask for a separation and ultimately a divorce? Oh, there was a scenario. There was a specific scenario where I realized, like, and I clearly saw, it's like my eyes open. I clearly saw the gaslighting, and because it was a terrible lie, it was hard for anyone to see it. And I was like, bro, what? <laughs> I was like, you sound dumb right now. Please stop. And I'm like, bro, I just, I can't do it anymore. I really, and he didn't, when I told him I wanted a divorce, he didn't say anything because he knew at that point I was fed up. Mm-hmm. I was fed up. And he just, he was like, okay. Oh, yeah, I was going to ask you, did he fight? To keep this marriage no he knew that there was no fighting even his when we when we finally told his parents his parents were the last people to know Mm -hmm. um when we told his parents his parents were looking at him like dude fight what are you doing and he was just like looking down with his head down wow he didn't have any fight in him i'm thinking back to when you and jared announced your separation in a joint statement and i think the sentiment was they're having a pretty amicable Mm -hmm separation yeah Mm -hmm. who wrote that statement and it was it your decision to have it written the way it was yes it was definitely my decision and 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 my statement um yeah uh yeah because I, i i went straight into planning mode and i was like i know you're you're gonna get blamed for this jared you're gonna get blamed for this and i was like i don't i don't want that for you i don't think I don't think the shushes and the jays of the world deserve to be bashed. Like, I just don't. Um, the shushes the what? And the shushes and the jays, you know, Shane, Shank, Shana, <laughs> Jackie, Jarrett. Like, the shushes and the jays of the world do not deserve. I don't think anyone deserves to get bashed like that, quite honestly. It's not normal. And that's why I keep saying, like, we're living a very human experience abnormally in front of thousands of people. And granted, we chose this life. 
I hate saying that, but we did choose this. We life. did. And mm-hmm. and we continue to l- use our platforms and we're trying our best to be real and honest, but we're processing like everyone else is. So mm-hmm. I only got divorced, what, five months ago, not even six months. Mm-hmm. And I'm having more and more revelations. I'm learning more and more about myself and I'm processing just like everybody else. Because one of the things that Jared also said on his Instagram live is that after the divorce, like you guys were cool. Like but we were it, cool because I was lying to mm-hmm. the public. And yeah. and I, again, I try to my best to live my life authentically. So because I was saying that we were friends in social media, I actually tried to be a support for him because technically he has support. He doesn't have healthy support, though. Mm-hmm. And so I tried my best to be because I knew I was one of the only ones. Um, and I was also one of the only ones to hold him like truly accountable. Um, and he had no choice but to listen to my accountability because I was his wife. Mm-hmm. Now, his friends, he can c- completely dismiss. It's like, whatever, he's a grown ass man. Right. <laughs> but like as his wife, it was different, which is probably why he also didn't want to come home to me because like I he didn't want to face the responsibility. He, he didn't want to face the responsibility that he signed up for. It's not like even with the second choice, people love to say that. Oh, but you were his second choice. Jared would have cheated on anyone because he was unhealed. Mm-hmm. And that's just the truth. I mean, again, I don't I don't think he's a bad person. He's just unhealed. He's so unhealed and he refuses to take accountability for his healing journey. And I realize eventually It's not my responsibility. I can't do it for you, man. And I want someone who will grow with me. And I love being growth mindset. It's so uncomfortable, but I love it. And he wasn't willing to face that uncomfortability. So people think that there was a contract in place to why you guys couldn't come out with your divorce. Is that accurate? No, the the year was the my personal deadline. Um, I was like, I want to give it at least a year. I feel like that's plenty of time for someone to at least show that they want to actually change their lifestyle. But again, Jared was saying one thing and doing something else. Um, and so after the year mark, um, I had to reanalyze. And I was like, eh. No, <laughs> I, I actually, it, <laughs> nope. was, it was a little bit, it was like a year and a month and then uh, something else happened. And then that's when I was like, yeah, no. I remember there were so many people speculating, oh, there must be a contract in There's place no contract. because Nick and Danielle, you know, also, um, you know, were divorcing a week after you announced your separation. So I remember people being like, they just stayed together for no, the show. And no. it was well, so If stupid. I did, I wouldn't have announced it before after the altar. I would have just mm-hmm. kept it pushing. Exactly. But I knew, I knew that people were going to call me like, oh, you guys were just faking it. And so that's why I was like, no, we're about to announce this now. I'm not about to fake it for the next couple of months. Like, that's just not going to happen. But, I mean, Danielle talked about that. She said the fact that, like, I decided to move forward with my divorce gave her the courage to do that as well. Yeah. And that, that was just like, that's just what happened. I mean, granted, the timing, I get it. It's it's suspicious. Don't be suspicious. Don't Don't be suspicious. suspicious. (laughs) But yeah. Another level of trauma bonding for you and Danielle, literally, too. Literally, we're all trauma bonded. Yeah. Oh, my God. Sorry. Yeah, we're all trauma bonded. Well, yeah. how are you today? I, do you know, I feel so free right now. I love that. I feel so free right now. I can tell. I, I feel so much lighter because I was carrying that all by myself and in secrecy. Yeah. And I'm just happy now that I can, because again, the reason why I did talk about it eventually is because like, I wanted to be honest with my podcast community that I've built by myself mm-hmm. and outside of the show. And, and, and they're like-minded people just like me who want to grow. And I, I don't have a podcast because I pretend to be an expert. I'm not an expert of life. Like <laughs> I'm figuring out just like everybody else. Yeah. Everyone's like, I got to hire you getting through bitch I don't know but like let's go together (laughs) let's figure it out together and I love that and I can be honest about that healing journey for myself now I have loved like even though you're the youngest from the cast I feel like you're such an old soul and like I love talking to you in a 12 year old body in a 12 year old body Um, but yeah you just have so much like emotional intelligence and that's why I connect with you so much I feel like not everyone around us understands life in the same way and so it's just like a different level of conversations that you know I'm able to have with you so but yeah I just wanted to say I'm proud of you and also can you tell us are are you dating? Ooh, big question. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I actually am dating. I know people see me going through all this shit and they're like, <laughs> you're not ready. The thing is, is like I have the energy now. I have the reservoir to like give to give my full self to a relationship. Um, I know. Right? I the reservoir. Um, to give to myself to a full relationship. Um, and uh, and I'm so I'm very self-aware. <laughs> You guys have seen I, I'm constantly analyzing myself. Um, so I know that like if I do 
discover another trigger, like I can quickly address it. And and so now I know, like I'm ready. I'm ready to get out there and start dating. Which is Let's go. Cray, cray. Yay. I love that. We're going to go on double dates. Oh, triple dates. <laughs> Honestly, let's do it. Can we yeah. just date each other? Because I can't. <laughs> Dude, kidding. No, I'm, really I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Honestly, I wouldn't be shocked if me and Natalie end up <laughs> just like living in the same house. Let's raise a kid together. <laughs> we, we've actually talked about be like, should we just like adopt a kid together? Raise it? Aww. <laughs> yeah, let's just do life together because I'm tired. Yeah. Tell us like what's coming up for you. Like what's ahead? What are you working on? Uh, really, it's just like working on my podcast um, and uh, just continuing to learn more about myself and, and grow and, and build. And uh, I don't know where this is going to go, but quite honestly, I I think this is the first time in my life where I feel so confident in myself. And, and now I can actually trust my intuition because I know my intuition is right. Um, I don't have to convince myself. I know you're so traumatized. You can't trust yourself. I know I can. And and I, I'm just like, I don't know. I'm just excited. Can you tell us where we can listen to your podcast? Yeah, uh, my podcast is called Fill in the Blank, F-E-E-L in the Blank. Um, clever name, right? <laughs> <That's> <laughs> cute. Um, but yeah, uh, you can find us on YouTube, on Instagram, on, um, I know the link is in my personal bio at Um So yeah, YouTube, Instagram, we're on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, like literally everything. So so yeah, just search us and, and you'll see, you know, two friends just trying to figure out life, basically. <laughs> Well, thanks so much, Ayana, for being here and being our first guest. We are so proud of you, and we wish you the best in life. And we're so excited to experience life together moving forward. Ooh, yes, love, love you. you. Thanks, thanks for, for having. Me. Thanks for being on. Yay. As always, we love, love, love getting your comments and your questions. So please continue sending them to our Instagram page at Out of the Pods. And as always, <laughs> make sure you leave a review and subscribe. Deep D and I will be chatting with more guests in the future, so you don't want to miss what they have to say. See you next Monday. Bye.